Hello, and welcome to my channel. I am Damien Marie at Hope. In the simplest terms, I am an atheist humanist philosopher and prehistorical writer researcher at DamienMarieAtHope.com. I am specifically an axiological atheist. An axiological atheism can be thought to involve ethical and value theory reasoned and moral argument driven apathyism, agnosticism, atheism, anti-theism, anti-religionism, secularism, and humanism. Axiological atheists can be understood as a value theory or a value science atheist. As an axiological atheism's ethically reasoned and constructive pro-humanity. I am an axiological thinker, value theorist. The science of goodness, worthiness, usefulness, valuableness, virtue, reliableness, accuracy, validity, morality, integrity, beneficialness, etc., etc. We axiologists have a value consciousness. And in general, we see the architecture of humanistic humanitarianism value in people that we see as dignity beings. Places and things are not. Axiology is a value theory. In its broadest sense, it involves areas of philosophy that are deemed to encompass some evaluative or evaluation aspect. Therefore, it crosses almost all domains in some way or another. Now for a more detailed terms as to what I am. I am an axiological atheist, an anti-theist, an anti-religionist, secularist, humanist, rationalist, writer, artist, poet, philosopher, advocate, activist, with schooling in psychology, sociology, as well as I am an autodidact, self-taught in science, archaeology, anthropology, and philosophy. I promote science and am against pseudoscience, pseudo-history, pseudo-morality, things that are found in religion. I support realism, axiology, of course, liberty, justice, ethics. I am also an anarchist socialist. I support Anarchism and Socialism, Progressivism, Liberalism, Philosophy, Psychology, Archaeology, and Anthropology, Advocating for Sexual, Gender, Child, Secular, LBGTQIA+, Race, Class Rights, and Equality. So if you can guess from all that, I support or challenge that I have an eclectic variety of videos on a variety of topics. Please take time to check them out. As well as enjoy, if you enjoy them, please give them a like. And don't forget to subscribe as new things are on their way all the time for my channel. Uh, no worries. Well, anyways, good to see you. Yeah, how's it going? <laughs> Been uh, thinking about it a lot. The, the uh, our talk going to be today on shamanism. Cool. And uh, I just watched a, a few videos. I always like before I talk to you. I always like to freshen up since <laughs> people don't realize like how much my mind has like has all so much information on all right. this, this prehistory stuff. And I know people are thinking, yeah, yeah. No, seriously, <laughs> I know a lot, <laughs> and it, it's it gets and and I, and it also because I want to show the different layers, it helps to remember like more accurately. Well, what what, what are, why do I feel there's layers in this sense? <laughs> you know, why do I feel it's a difference to begin with? I need because I I believe in justificationism. <clears throat> As a rationalist, I mean, everything right, has to right. be justified. I don't just believe because oh, I feel so or because I, I, I would like to. I mean, it's just, it's not warranted. <laughs> to yeah, it's, it, if you can't justify it to somebody else, then why would they agree with you or believe what oh, you're saying? Totally. And so, and right. So that's why some people like, because um, some of my ideas are um, controversial. 
Hmm. Although they're always generally justified in the reasons. So everybody at first goes like, what the? And they read, read more and they learn more and they learn more and they go, oh, damn. Right. So <laughs> that's really the response. Even archaeologists at first are like, burr, burr, and then they read a couple of my things and they're like, well, okay, maybe, but then, no, hold on, show them some more. And they're like, <laughs> <"What>? wow. <laughs> But nice. but I understand, but you know, that, but I I always take it the opposite of how like the conspiracy theorist people. Mm. Every time I get challenged, I don't go, like, oh man, they're always challenging me like it's some bad thing. Right, right. I, I would have the opposite opinion. Why the fuck are you believing me so easily? <laughs> <laughs> it's generally how I feel. Not not that you know, I mean people should because I have reasons and I and I plethora make sure that I support that. But, yeah. But I am shocked even how me, sometimes like some people, not everybody, but some people I say like just the smallest thing, they're like totally on, on board. I'm like, okay, but I haven't justified it yet. I mean, <laughs> you know, it must already you... agree with something they believe, right? Yeah, like, I totally believe it. Like, yeah, let me finish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me we finish the entire thought. Believe... <laughs> well, because here's the thing too, is that we may not believe it for the same reason. Right, yeah, probably. Yeah, but, lots of times hap that happens. Or, or that maybe we both agree on something that, like, say if we said both, both God's untrue. Yep, totally correct. Right. If you say, I believe God's untrue because lightning scared people and that's how gods were invented. And then that's where we would. Right, nope. right. That's a divergence, Wrong. right? That's a divergence for me. Maybe some people feel this because they don't understand like I do. That's absolute fucking nonsense. Religion starts in animism. Animists are totally one with nature. They, they work with nature. In fact, I've watched um, something today, in fact, uh, that was similar to that. And it showed how they're like, yes, out in the Amazon, it's hard to do fires because all wood is wet. And here's this indigenous dude in like about a minute starting a fire with a cut piece of, of tree. Shaves it into like this little tiny, like, you know, sticks almost. Right, and then puts it in a like a small bundle, and then like lights it up. Like whoa! And by <laughs> me too, that how arrogant Westerners, even if like here's a survivalist, he'll show you how to use wet matches and you know and how to you know. <laughs> and then right. here, here's a native person like make sure you find dry wood because you can't do it with wet wood. Here's an indigenous person. Excuse me. Here's a wet tree. Cuts it down. Watch this. Yeah. Watch the fire, and they're like, "What the?" I mean, yeah, because, <laughs> yep. But 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 also, like I said, I, so I feel that there should be the the, um, the problem with natives, uh, indigenous, not problem, but there's an issue that relates to because I'm I'm saying it's not the indigenous people problem, right? <laughs> <laughs> I want to clarify right. that. When I'm, that is not a thing we are saying here. <laughs> okay, but I'm, I'm like want to make sure that I I architecture this statement correctly. Yeah. I'm saying that Western or whatever, non-Indigenous, just put it that way, make it the simplest, non-Indigenous people's view of Indigenous can be, to me, two things. Either seeing them as barbarian, which that we read in the, the last video right. on totemism, that some of the people's feeling on primitive communism, calling it that, that word is wrong anyways, because to me, when I think of like um, barbarian, I think of barber, which has to do with the Berbers, I believe. Okay. And it's what the Greeks, I think, called the people of North Africa, and then generally sort of everybody after that. If I remember right, maybe I'm in error, but it's something like that. But it doesn't matter. The whole concept is wrong because a barbarian is basically anybody that doesn't have your views. <laughs> right. Okay. And, and yeah. It's not. <laughs> so. You know, if you know, but like if you say barbarism, if you're trying to classify something as depending on how you're saying it, so I, I wouldn't use the word at all. But it, but if I was going to classify something, I would talk about it in inhuman behavior, a behavior mm -hmm. of say hurting people, you know, uh, taking right. coercive advantage. I don't know, Trump, you know, yeah, it, the ability to have a cult is a natural thing that's going to happen. I, I don't think that it's possible almost because of just being social animals for that kind of behavior not to happen. Right. It's the people that are seeing this happen, taking advantage of it, that makes them to me barbarous or whatever, or monstrous mm -hmm. or whatever you want to call it. 
so because I mean, like, like I like I told you before, I know that I have the ability to like talk and, and like persuade people and stuff. If I were to use that in a negative way, that would be awful. And right. I, I would, and I would feel that it's crazy to me too. If I did this and the atheist community was silent, you would think something is wrong with the atheist community. I mean, or anarchist community. Anarchist yep. songs like, yep. what the fuck is this crazy ass anarchist? But you know, trying to control people. And the same thing should be with religious or anyone. So yeah. I always find it odd that it's like shouldn't be that us, you know, free thinkers, atheists, skeptics, whatever, you know, rationalists, it shouldn't be that like, somehow we're against religious people. I mean, shouldn't we all be against this claim that sounds horrid? I mean, right, right. Or behavior like so shamanism, right? Can have in a sense good intentions, right? If uh, people don't know, that my general kind of thinking of shamanism is beyond the fact that it's in a sense animism, which is spirit beliefs, totemism in a sense representation of things in the world that relate to spirit beliefs, sort of there's other stuff too, clan and, and personhood. But shamanism is kind of about like healing, belief in that, okay. and then like control of spirit world. And almost control the clan as a sort of result. Okay. <laughs> and also it's like like fortune tellers and people would, would call um, like a witch doctor. That's all shamanism. And even paganism, like when they say witch, shaman. Because shamans oh, right, right. do the, the poisons. Shamans do the healing herbs. Shamans, you know, supposedly do, especially intoxicants. Alcohol, super connected to paganism to me. Okay. Like hallucinogens, super connected to shamanism. So even if you see it in paganism, it's almost, I guarantee you, look somewhere. There's a shaman influence. Okay. But, did, you, did you get a chance to, to look at any of the pictures I sent you? I looked briefly, but yeah, not, not in depth. <laughs> well, because I wanted you just to, because I know that a lot of times when, when I say these things, people get a fixed idea that's not, the reality, but it's some caricature, right? That you've been presented when you say shaman. Like before, if I said shaman and you had never met me, how would your opinion have been? What would you have said? Oh, I would have assumed it was like the, uh, like like you say, like kind of the spiritual leader of some indigenous tribe, like right. depending on the region. But yeah, right. So, and if I asked you to explain something about it. But beyond that, would you really go? <laughs> I, don't, I don't have anything. I don't really have anything to base it on right, beyond well, that. So, so it, it's important. So, and like you said, it's it's the, the thing I, I, we're trying to talk about today is the fact that it happened like 35 or 30, you know, six or something, but after 40 for sure. Right. And sometime before 30, it's occurring. Right. Yeah, shamanism, 30,000 years ago, I'm talking about in, in Europe. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Where's my but, just gonna and, and, and so but it, it it and I'm not saying this is what people understand too, where I'm not saying that it didn't sort of change a little bit along the way, but it didn't but it's really amazing, right? Because people like love traditions. Yeah, well they right. not stopped ever doing that. And if guess what? If you just keep doing that for thousands and thousands of years, then guess what? It becomes that you know you're still kind of doing some of the similar stuff. Right. Yeah. It it becomes so entrenched that it, even in things we don't associate with it, there's it has those roots. Totally. In fact, I sent you something. I don't know if you read it, but I sent you something. I had an argument. No, not a long one, but an argument with a, a, an archaeologist because. Unlike some people that have arguments with archaeologists, I have arguments about specific issues, and then usually I am supporting my positions. Let's just put it that way. Okay. I want to say that I generally, you know, am seen as, you know, I don't want to say winning, but just because <laughs> the only reason, it's not like I'm saying I'm better than I'm not better than that. Right, just, right. I've done, like, to me, archaeologists are way better, like, at their field, like, say, Someone does room and pottery. Kick my ass. I don't know that much, but I can know a little bit. I can I can look at some of the stuff and think maybe maybe Roman, not Greek, you know. Right. But, um, 
if you start asking me like where in the Roman world or what time, oh, I don't know. <laughs> right. You almost need to specialize in that stuff in order to know. Oh, that they stuff, specialize right? way more than that. They specialize sometimes in one type of pottery, right? One type of region. Or one, I mean, it's not cool. like uh, archaeology and movies where one archaeologist knows all of the history and all of the yeah. things. <laughs> yeah. That, that I would say that I'm closer to that really than, than a, a, most archaeologists would be because I've, I've studied from, you know, like 3 million years or whatever. I would generally say a million years because I didn't study deep when it's the older stuff, but okay. I wanted, I wanted to, to just understand like what happened. So, but I just, but basically a million years to about 5,000, I'm, I'm pretty, strong in understanding like what happened and that, that that helps to understand because it wasn't like i understood shamanism either <laughs> i mean i was raised christian and i almost didn't know the christian faith myself let alone right. other religions and certainly <laughs> not ones that you know most people don't don't understand but really you do understand this is the what me is the most oddest thing is that when you learn the way I, I understand all the religion parts, you start seeing them all in their beliefs. Oh, guess what shamans like to do when they do a bonfire? They like to do it seven high because then you could talk to spirits. <laughs> mm, sacred number seven. God's number. An interesting spirit number. Uh, here's another thing. They also go three times around um, the fire or down safety okay. trees, you know, three times, you know. But so there's a lot that, you know, it's once again, Holy Trinity, but that has to do with the phases of the moon, too. And it has to do with phases of the sun because the dawn goddess is different from the day goddess or the right. day god or the or the dusk deity, you know. So but that's because w w we don't think that way. But this this thought of that, like somehow Christians invented the Holy Trinity. Huh laughable right I, <clears throat> I it's all the things that everything is kind of based on something from before it in some level right well a lot it often is not always but it often is so i would say mm -hmm. that it's not always because like some people say well all myths have a kernel of truth no that is not true. <laughs> <laughs> some myths are flat out bullshit and have right? nothing to do with any kind of truth they just came out of nowhere yeah well it's not maybe well Came out of someone's imagination. Like, let's right, right. Shamanism. Just to, I sent you a thing that I just was listening to, the video. So I thought, oh, great, because they said that the reason the shaman wears the horns is so that the clouds, which are the spirits or contain the spirits or relate to the spirits in some way, can then be, you know, in a sense, funneled into the, the shaman, become spirit filled. Okay, interesting. So, what, 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 it, it, I always wondered because I have a lot of archaeological art where the shamans were on horns, and people are saying, "What does that mean exactly?" I said, "Well, I know it relates to stars or the sky or something, souls or ancestors. I don't know exactly like why." <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but then why, this <laughs> this kind of theory came out where it's like because it connects to the sky and increases well, well, their I, spiritual well, power. Okay, so. An actual, it's not a theory, it's an actual okay. shaman saying this is oh, our okay. traditional beliefs, and me going, Oh, that now I know why the hell they're wearing horns. I knew they're wearing horns. Well, there we go. Yeah, why exactly? I think, well, maybe to take on the spirit of the animal and that these horns do relate to stars. I, why? Mm, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I was saying before, too. There's things that I kind of know. Well, I know that the reason I know that for stars because there's actual art that's about 6,000 years old and down where they're making animals like tusks or, or horns with stars in them. So, I mean, that's clearly what that is. Right. So, so to me, I already kind of knew they were doing something with the horns and tusks being something that relates to the spirits. So I, I already got it. See, I see it. Some people for say, Oh, they're wearing them for hunting. Maybe. Because they could have a dual purpose, but absolutely it was religious. Mm -hmm. So the same thing what I sent you well, going back to that that one archaeologist that argued, which I right uh, yeah, on, but I didn't finish. Sorry, so I, my, <laughs> I have I have um, an A personality and a C personality. An A personality is super highly creative, can almost like invent stuff. Super terrible in the sense of teaching because 
they're like like a pinball. Bing, 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 bing. <laughs> right. You know, and then a C personality is a lot more structured and is better at teaching. But I'm a little bit of both. So <laughs> neither of them sound anything like me. But <laughs> what's that? Was said, something like you? Yeah, neither of those sound anything well, like a, me. A, a B personality is considered a general, like a general kind of teacher, I think, if I remember right, where they're always structured and they're pretty good at teaching people. Like, like if you have like a D personality, they're like really bad at, at people. <laughs> And they they don't really teach well either. <laughs> okay, they're just they different because it, it just it it depends on your your thing like your ability, like. But anyway, so I, I'm I'm considered <laughs> what I'm supposed to say is I'm considered yeah. those two together okay. is like amazing because it's like super gifted at people and super good at understanding and explaining. Right. The problem is the order part where sometimes people... you still bounce around. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's still Fair. kind of an issue. But anyway, let's go back to the piece. So. The archaeologists that I had an issue with, I said I made a comment because this is how I feel. <laughs> I said that religion is a cultural product. Right. That's it. Not special, not separate <laughs> from culture. It's like saying that language is separate from culture. Well, language is a cultural product to me. In other words, it took culture first to end up with language. Could, you could not. I, I, I said, yeah, like language did not happen. Like a soul person never did anything, and and this is no or isolated. No, it's about sharing. It's the whole yeah. point is which is culture, right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyways, but, but anyways, <laughs> an argument about but but because believe me, those are arguing that I'll probably win. And they'll piss them off and they'll hate me and shit, and or you think I'm you know arrogant because I am. But anyways. It's not always a bad thing. It's it's a better thing if you're able to check yourself, really. The yeah. humbleness of being able to be wrong. It's not that you are arrogant about being right. It's that can you be told you're wrong? That's what right. I, that's what I want to hear. I don't care how arrogant someone is. Let me hear them take the criticism. Oh, then we'll know who someone is. Yeah. Anyways, he um he said to me, Damien, religion and culture are very different, or or something. And I okay. went, but they're kind of not, you know, <laughs> but are you, and I, I was like, are you saying, I don't remember exactly. And I wrote it to you, but I don't remember exactly now on my top of my head, but I, I wrote to you, but anyways, I, if someone, I'm going to put it in, in, our, in the um, blog for this video, but cause it's, it's an important issue. Yep. So, so I said, are you sure it's always been that way? Right. In every culture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, and what about Native Americans? Are you saying that their cultural beliefs and religion are completely separate things? I'm thinking you've never met a Native American person. Yeah, their spiritual like, beliefs are fundamentally tied. If you, uh, like if part you of say culture. their culture, they start telling you their religion. You're like, they asked you for your culture like that. Is my culture? That's yeah. my point. Yeah, people, this idea that it's like separate is like once again like a Western, a Western right. Idea superiority because separate things you know their shit's all culture our shit's religion you know <laughs> yeah mm. yeah <laughs> as as though as though our culture and religion are separate oh totally. when it's clearly not <laughs> oh yeah because ask ask a christian if they think that their culture should if their, their religion should stay separate from our culture right no, exactly. they want to shove it down our throat with their boots yeah. well and even just in casual ways like on television shows you can't watch a, a mainstream TV show without somebody talking about their going to church or their religious beliefs or, you know, or capitalism or it's capitalism. <laughs> yeah. Profit is the most wonderful thing. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's all pro business. <laughs> How dare you not be pro. These are job creators. Like, <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. It's just team. millionaires are just an accepted thing. Right. Or billionaires. But it's, 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 See, but you get closer to my issue always is axiological. I don't care about what structure you want to build that <laughs> say, okay? I don't care if you have 10,000 ways to get to something. I want to hear what the actual on the ground shit when it meets the worker. How right. the fuck is it? How is it then? How yeah. ethical? So you're like, because this one capitalist, fucking try to tell me, Damien, I don't understand what your problem is. You need to understand that Damien, there's nothing wrong with profit. And I said, oh, did I say that? <laughs> I'm saying that. In fact, my memes say P 
people before profit, not never profit. There you okay. Go. So ethics before ego, right? Mm -hmm. To me, this is this goes to, to the issue is ethics. It's our interaction with people. It's the the so let's go right. So I tell them it's culture and. He basically thought that he was right. And then when I started bringing up Native Americans and stuff, he realized I'm right. Mm -hmm. Or I'm closer to right than maybe he is. Or maybe that there are has been times when it was the case that Damien was right. And right. since Damien talks about prehistory, which everyone needs to remember, Damien's thinking thousands of years in the past, then that's what it is. And you need to remember that. It's also yeah. people listening. When I'm talking about shamanism or totemism or animism, it's not that they don't exist today. They do. But I'm referring to the historical context as, as well as our understanding of the present. Right. Which is, right. in a sense, ethnography. When you understand how, like, like when, when I hear the people say, oh, we use the horns on our shaman thing because it relates to the clouds. It allows the channeling of the spirits. I go, Fuck, that's what they were wearing all these things for thousands of years. Now I understand. Right. 11,000 years old. Everyone was wondering, what the hell were they fucking doing with these things? I don't know either. You mean, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but now through ethnography, I don't have a guess. I have a reasoned probability. Right, right. Yeah. 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 And informed... And inform, uh, there you go. Inform. Yeah. That's why I tell people that I have reason speculations. I don't have wild speculations. They go, because one, so once again, archaeologist, not to be put it down, but because I want to help everyone understand like how you say things sometimes. Because they'll say, oh, I only have a speculation, Damien. I can't offer. You offer all kinds of speculations. I can't offer speculations. I go, you can't? Of course you can. You don't and know? You probably do. <laughs> <laughs> well, true. Well, like, well, it's Roman, right? How do you know that? Well, because it matches something else. How do you know that? I mean, I, we it, it isn't it, well because in the same time zone as other artifacts that are Roman. Oh, so we can know things. Yeah, that's right. So we, we can draw make certain, speculations yeah. that are reasonable. Well, yeah, I got to match the facts. Well, if you're listening to me. When have I ever said don't match the facts? <laughs> and and I, in I, fact. I, Change change the speculation when new facts come to light. <laughs> Dude, I constantly do that. People understand. The reason in my book often now, especially towards the end, is so close to if I could watch new stuff and it just supports what I already know instead of almost debunking it is because I'm close to it already. Right. <laughs> I've been really hard looking at the facts. And it, it, so it's different than that because some people have philosophized, well, I think, or I look at the cultures today. And that doesn't fucking help. I'm telling you. <laughs> right. All right. So anyways, good. Good. Let's go read some people's opinions about the past that may not have actually understood as much as they think. So we've got uh, Marx and Engels also noted how capitalist accumulation latched itself onto social organizations of primitive communism. For instance, in private correspondence, the same year that The Origin of the, the Family was published, Engels attacked European colonialism, describing the Dutch regime in Java, directly organizing agricultural production and profiting from it, on, quote, on the basis of the old communistic village communities, end quote. He added that cases like the Dutch East Indies, British India, and the Russian Empire showed how today primitive communism furnishes the finest and broadest basis of exploitation. Anarchists, including Kropotkin and Rick Luce, uh, believe that societies that exemplified primitive communism were also examples of an of anarchist society before industrialization, with the San people of Southern Africa being a basis for Kropotkin's anthropological work on anarchism and gift economies in mutual aid. Little development. Right. Hold on a second. Oh, yeah. And like I told you, and or do you are do you remember why is Africa different than everywhere else when it comes to anarchism? Africa is the only place that I know of where the cultures are almost pure animist mm -hmm. and zero anything else. Right. right. Not very many of them, but it's like th that little hub, and so the sand people are. are close to that i think they have um a little bit of because they have a, a, a i think a goat deity and a mantis uh female i think it is or right right because 
hierarchies came with totemism after correct that. see you're you <laughs> are picking this up you are picking this up. <laughs> yeah and that's not to attack people that are totemists it's just to say that they start structuring the world animists are like everyone's equal everyone has a say we help everybody yeah we work as a group we're all people like you know where totemist says wait a minute you're you i'm us we're this different clan where that's a search and then shamanism is in a sense um out of that almost like a more feminine response because where totemism is saying here's the structure here's this thing here's this hierarchy here's who matters or whatever sort of then shamanism says well but we have to help the poor and the sick and the weak and the elderly Okay. And the ones that are retarded or deformed or things, those people are special. They're not actually ah, interesting. They're the special one we should be caring for because, because there's a lot of people that are strong. Very few are born weak. So it's actually the weak that are the special. That's, that's a very interesting way of looking at it. Right. So you'll, it, especially, this is totally so in the eyes. Shamans, okay. anything with injury to the eyes or stuff. And that's why even the first burial, which you didn't look at, but the, the first burial, um, there's a um, figurine head, like the oldest like portrait figurine head of the shaman. Probably they believe. I mean, once again. Okay. Speculation. speculation. Right, right. But since it's buried like almost next to the thing and it, it seems to have eye damage and the, the person buried female has eye damage and it's a female figure with eye damage almost the same eye, i think it was or whatever i can't remember exactly okay i believe it's because they are they what i'm gonna say is they think it's the same but i just try to be a little more careful because once again about showing people how to think right trying, in other words, i, I want to teach people how to think of the past not just blindly believe everything <laughs> right and just see or or to understand that like an axiologist, you need to level your belief, like sort of to the how much justification, how much facts, not right. just hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred. What? Whoa! <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. If the evidence comes in, then you adjust slightly, and if you <laughs> right, but it, but it should be proportioned in a sense to the other. Like like you ask if people are religious, how much do you believe? How much? They always hundred percent. I totally believe. What the hell? Kind of all of them, hundred percent. I mean, you get my point, though. But you can, yeah, a reason person should be like sort of, a, you know. Anyways, yeah, for sure. Uh, where was I? Uh, little development in the research of "quote unquote" primitive communism occurred among Marxist scholars beyond Engels' study until the twentieth and twenty-first centuries, when Ernest Ma Mandel, Rosa Luxemburg, Ian Hodder and Marija Gimbutas and others took up and developed upon the theses. Non-Marxist scholars of prehistory and early so, history. Oh. Maria Gimbutas, whatever her name, or I'm saying it Kim wrong. Gimbutas? No, you said it. You said it. I've heard it before. <laughs> You're saying it wrong, and I don't even want to try to say it because I remember it said, said different. But anyways, if I remember right, but um, that's one that was all into like the, the, the goddess things. But to okay. me, she put too much emphasis on it and also acted as if the, the goddess culture only and invaded by this male culture. It's okay. Not, that's not how I see it. I actually think it went opposite. I, I Possibly. The, the people that she thinks was the goddess culture had already invented the god and then gave this new people both the goddess and the god, and then they spread that new religion everywhere. Interesting. That's sort of my thought. Okay. But anyways. <laughs> Sound, sounds, <laughs> from, to my ears, they both sound like, sure, I have, <laughs> I have no basis. Well, but, right, but, but, yeah. but, but I have, well, I, I don't, once again, I'm not just making comments. I have, I, I, I show like what was happening and I know that these things were occurring before. Right. So. Anyway. Which people can see in the, they'll be able to see in the blog post that goes along. Oh, yeah, with the well, not this one. This one is particularly, for, that's Indo-European 7,000. When we start talking about 7,000, they'll absolutely, oh, okay. I'm going to have pictures mainly of shamanism. So, okay. but yes, we're, we're going to do other videos. I'm just relating right. it. Well, because really all of it kind of eventually, it all really 
relate. That's why it's important to understand it. It all relates. Sure. Um, Non-Marxist scholars of prehistory and early history did not take them seriously. Although it was occasionally engaged, but often dismissed, Soviet theorists and anthropologists such as Sternberg consider some of the indigenous groups of Siberia and Russia, Far East, such as, and I have no, the Nivk. Yeah, that's probably not right either. But <laughs> to be primitive communist in nature. Soviet scholars such as the ethnographer Zelenin looked at none, looked at hunter, non hunter gatherer societies within Soviet Union to identify remnants of the primitive communism within their societies. The idea of a classless and stateless society based on communal ownership of property and wealth also stretches back, far back in Western thought long before the Communist Manifesto. There are scholars who have traced communist ideas back to ancient times, particularly in the work of Pythagoras and Plato. Uh, followers of Pythagoras, for instance, lived in one building and held their co property in common because the philosopher taught the absolute equality of property within, with all worldly possessions being brought into a common store. I actually just, it wasn't so, that long ago, I think I just was listening to uh, something regarding Plato's communism and uh -huh. how how it relates to kind of like uh, our current ideas of communism and, and it's not quite exactly the same. And uh, it wasn't quite as hierarchical less <laughs> as we might prefer, right? <laughs> but uh, from an anarchist perspective, but uh, yeah, it, communism is not a purely new Marx idea, obviously. <laughs> well, yeah, obviously. Well, because, well, once again, to me, like, like when people try to argue with me about uh, what communism or defend it, I, I, I just don't have a lot of energy to care because I always feel like I'm having an argument on why it's good to be kind, why it's good to have, you know, value <laughs> other humans. I mean, right. I just, how can I, I, why is it good to be good? I mean, what, not just kill people. I mean, what? This seems self-evident. <laughs> oh, it goes back to like you were, I was saying about, I said to the, 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 the capitalist trying to tell me I was wrong or I don't understand mm. it's just about wealth. And I said, see, it isn't about profit. Profit being, in a sense, in a reasoned person's mind, not a capitalist. A reasoned person's mind would be what you make off of someone buying what you just make. Right. A capitalist thinks, yeah, but I want to make sure I can make money off the labor, too. Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. See, exactly. you know Hold on. Right there, motherfucker. I <laughs> yeah. swear it's fucking bullshit. See right there. Because could, could you make profit and not profit off your la person's labor? In other words, like say that you come in and I'm doing jewelry and I give you in, in, what a portion of your absolute labor is, right? How much portion should you get to be ethical? Should you get well, one <laughs> piece of the, of the pizza? And that's ethical, like capitalism, or does it not even matter? Like some of them don't even want any kind of limit. So the piece can be one little crust. Yeah. You know, hey, you still got something. You could have yeah. got nothing. That's capitalist mentality. When I'm thinking, wait a minute, how the fuck is it ethical that I have a pizza that I made and you get to fucking steal the whole fucking thing practically? The fuck? Now, telling me. I, I because I work in this thing and I can and we we communally use tools and it costs you know say fifty cents to use the tool. Why exactly do you charge me one hundred dollars? Yep. Right? Because they'll go right, right. They go, oh, but the machinery costs. Okay, fine. Tell me how much your machinery is is part of the thing, and then say how much my actual labor made. Yep. Oh well, well that doesn't really. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yes, it does. You're. I just told you the, the ethical un unethicalness that's so fucking blatant to me in capitalism is you make profit off your laborers. This is fucking disgusting to me. I don't care about nothing else. This right here, because they'll go, you can have fair capitalism. And I go, oh, do you mean fair capitalism by you stop making money off your laborers? Because <laughs> then it's not capitalism. <laughs> because when you do that, maybe it will sound interesting to me to... to until then, I just hear utter bullcrap about why it's okay to fucking abuse people. I'm not. Yeah, it's like you say. Like if you think about uh, 
the socialist socialism, the transitional state between now and communism, right? Um, if we're saying that the workers own the means of production and therefore the workers get the profit from the labor that they value that they produce, that's just, but shit, I mean, isn't that sound logical so far? I mean, <laughs> where's the, where's yes. the strong logical just hold on now. <laughs> You have to let the capitalists make money off of you. Not right. just off of the product they sell, but off of you, motherfucker. There needs to be a set, a third party yes. who, who takes the profits and says, but you couldn't do this if you hadn't had my capital in the first place. And like I said, okay, fine. So what exactly price should I pay as a fee? Because it should be a fee then. Not right. all yeah. my fucking wealth. Yeah, like like interest on a loan. It, okay, fine. So it cost me five bucks. Then where the rest is my five hundred dollars? Yeah, exactly. Oh, well, that's because I had to risk. Huh. So once again, <laughs> some justification why you can actually use me to make earning. You're earning off of the laborer. This yeah. is disgusting. I, I, like I said, it is no way you can make it ethical to me. Where I go, oh yeah, for sure. Someone is not entitled to their work. Uh, to you, like I yeah. said, you can make profit, right? And we can communally. You and me can make jewelry. The jewelry, right? You didn't buy the the metal. So if you did labor, it, it's not the same. But are you saying that you shouldn't get money because you don't do work? I mean, it's just. And I also hate, really hate, to me, is they think depending on how much a capitalist gives you of money, that that means like somehow you're a better human being or something right human or whatever the fuck yeah <laughs> like like the ceo of a company is somehow superior to the janitor well right, no but that's not because based are. on the money based on the money that they get from the capitalist right <laughs> it, it, yeah it, 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 it's <laughs> like i said i i think ethically so it, it's i i got like people like economics and i'm like okay Economics after the I don't hear you're using the laborer to make your earning. Because that part right there yeah. is a sticking point for me. Yeah. That's that's where the line is. <laughs> Huge. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, so I, I do agree that in a sense, I don't I don't, I don't agree with how 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 they talk about the stuff to me is like I don't like it. <laughs> But it, it also could be just that they're their old way of thinking and we have more information so we can make better, you know. Yeah, it's very 19th more century. Form. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, but but also, I mean, just think if you talk to just some random people, would they have be as informed as I'm trying to help people be informed? Generally not. Yeah, generally not. So it, it is, I think that's why I felt compelled and I appreciate you helping. I do feel that this is important. We need to understand it's not joking, laughing. We need to understand this as a, so we can actually solve this. Yeah. We yeah. We can't, right. we, we can't sit here like critical race theory, right? The people denying it, you know? You can't sit here and go, I don't want to see any of the facts, but I got all the answers. Right, right. <laughs> what we want is we want all the facts. And we want to come up with good answers for everyone. Because you understand, like science, because you understand the reality of the world, you can then navigate that world in a sense more effectively. Yeah. And that's what I want to do too with thinking and navigate these things. These things are not going to go away by us wishing them away or calling them names. No, that's right. It may right. be fun to do, but that shit's worthless. That's why some of the people, the atheist community, get into just picking on people. Yeah, how productive is that? You're like, yeah, slap each other in the back. Okay, now, or even the communists or socialists, just capitalists a piece of shit. Okay, we all agree. Now what? I mean, fuck, yeah. we need to do something. Do you think that just saying that is going to get people to reason better? Right. Uh, yeah, we have to give them reasons and information so that they can work on that themselves. And I feel like, oh my, don't you guys get how wonderful our side is? What the <laughs> fuck? We don't have to sell this shit. What? <laughs> We just have to get people to understand it will sell itself. Like you deserve to be empowered. And they're like, no, I, I can't. No, damn it, don't. Tell me that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, and I, I guess we're kind of going afield from our essay, but uh, this is why the political right has so much traction 
in the United States and Canada the, right now is because they're very good at looking people in the eye and saying, you deserve to have a say in your community and power in your community. And then they say, that's why we have to keep out the immigrants. And that's why we have to. <laughs> yeah, you're like, yes, what? <laughs> when really what they should be doing is looking at the bosses who are actually in control of our day-to-day -day lives and the landlords and the, you know, the people with power. But uh, they scapegoat the wrong people, right? They scapegoat uh, well, well, innocence. And, and, and if people think that representative democracy could ever really do big jumps, just look at the bullshit now. How could Biden come in and say, we're going to do this big plan. We're going to stick it to the rich. All of us are going, <laughs> all right, cool. Do it. <laughs> it's a do fucking it. time. <laughs> what have you been waiting for? Yeah. But anyways, but then one person, right? Supposedly, right? Supposedly yeah. one of the Democratic Senate, not like all of them. No, one that's right. Them, and Biden, the, you know, we won't, we won't we won't take anything from the rich. They said, well, what was her justification? Did you hear it? I did she not. She doesn't want one penny to come from the rich. I'm like, oh, that's about Who's capitalism in a freaking nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> so we instead you take what money from the people who can't who don't already have it. I was exactly. like, that was the truth said out loud. Like, yeah. That wasn't your inside voice. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. People might have actually heard that. <laughs> yeah. That's a problem. Mm. That's also yeah. why I think you can't ever have government because they just proved it. Yeah. Like the representational style of democracy clearly uh, is not working to represent the actual citizens of the democracy right they did a study i can't remember if it's berkeley or whatever there's a study i guess i can find it but i'm not going for this blog but if someone tax me maybe i will go look it up sure but there's a study and they did i don't know i just forgot what i was going to talk about mm. what were you talking about before I think, I think, oh yeah i remember now they did ugh, can't remember which body it was i want to say congress but because I can't remember that. It's like, I, according to the study, I can kind of not remember. But anyways, it was something like 3% of what the American people really want, they do. Oh, it's yeah. Like, it's like yeah. F. You know, yeah. it's, it, it's, it's horrid. So to think that somehow this is the best system we can do. I, are you on crack? It's like, it's like a, a, a person who needs mental health telling you, oh, no, I'm fine. The shotgun and this dead person is just an inconvenience at the moment. <laughs> yeah, I I hear a lot of people will say like they uh yes, our current system sucks except for everything compared to everything else. And I always think like but that's just a complete lack of imagination. Like you're just stopping at what you've seen and you're ignoring any other possibilities. And instead and saying, well, that makes the status quo good enough. Well, and, and which is why I focus so much on ethics. Yeah. Because it's really hard to argue when you bring it back to, yeah, but it's ethical. Are you saying it's ethical to take a, a worker's labor? Right. Because I'm not saying it's bad to have profit, but I am saying it's bad to fucking steal a worker's labor. <laughs> which is, take their labor, not give them health care, not keep them safe, then put them down, not let them have time off. Like, and the thing goes on. <laughs> And then you put them in hazardous conditions and in danger. I mean, yeah. And then when they finally get fed up and you strike and they strike, you hire scabs at yeah. less money to come and fill in and do the job half-assed. And before they would just have union busters, right? They would cut uh, yeah. the Pinkertons yeah. come in and freaking kill people. Yeah. I mean, so uh, people, <laughs> yeah, America landed the, <laughs> yeah, landed. the only except for every I single really aspect of my life, the protection of profit. Yes. Protection of private profit, excuse me. That America is 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 solely in the institution of protecting private profit. Yeah. Whether it's because they'll protect profit overseas, they'll protect the oh, yeah. They don't care where the hell the profit is. Like the oil, they go, Oh, we had it to Saudi Arabia because of the economy. See, it wasn't about ethics. <laughs> it's like 
You don't forget it was about oil. I mean, yeah. Well, Kuwait. Yeah, it wasn't because Kuwait is a country. We should never let any country be taken over. No, it was because if they do that, they're going to go right over and take over Saudi Arabia. Then we won't have, we'll have to pay more for oil. Well, I mean, yeah. even Afghanistan, like we know that the U.S. has been in, in, in uh, involved in Afghanistan since before the 80s because they were worried about Russia. They weren't worried. They were worried about communism. <laughs> they, were, they were afraid of losing profits. They weren't worried about the well-being of the Afghan people. And really, when they say that they, they're the elite losing profits, they're not really caring about the small person. No. Read the red hat that's calling themselves a capitalist. I mean, they sort of like laugh and ha ha capitalist. Yeah. But anyways, this is keep reading because we, we <laughs> yeah, we could just I, go I, on like this. You no, know, I want to do other videos beyond just talking about prehistory. I want to talk about other issues like you know, queer anarchism, and, and I want to talk about you know, um, open relationship and nudism, all this relating to socialism, and anarchism because yeah. all this is part of the history. But I'm saying the other stuff too. I want to talk about so it. it there's a lot to talk about, so let's not get, let's not get, let's not yep. get sidetracked. Too much worse, eh? Okay, uh, where am I? Uh, it is argued that Plato's Republic described in great deal, detail a communist-dominated society wherein power is delegated in the hands of intelligent philosopher or military guardian class and rejected the concept of family and private property. In a social order divided into warrior kings and the Homeric demos of craftsmen and peasants, Plato conceived an ideal Greek city-state without any form of capitalism and commercialism, with business enterprise, political plurality, and working class unrest considered as evils that must be abolished. While Plato's vision cannot be considered a precursor of communist thinking, his utopian speculations are shared by other utopian thinkers later on. An important feature that distinguishes Plato's ideal society in the Republic is that the ban on private property applies only to the superior classes, rulers and warriors, not to the general public. I think actually I was lead, reading, uh, I was reading for my other show, for my uh, show, The Mind of a Skeptical Leftist, uh, a book called The Anarchist Turn. And one of the things in Plato's Republic or, or Plato's communist idea uh, was a, a kind of a the way that you build solidity or solidarity within your community is by everybody eating within a communal area, because uh, the idea of eating together is very, uh, it builds community and it builds solidarity and caring for one another. And definitely that, that is um, seen in the first use of pottery. 22,000 years ago in Southern China, moving up all the way to Siberia and, Japan, then shooting all the way across to Europe and then filtering down the Middle East. All of that was communal eating. Yeah. Sacred communal eating as well, I probably say. I think I don't think that, that, that pottery was invented just for like, hey, let's just make some people. Let's just sit together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I don't think I, I think I think it was absolutely religious. And it eventually gets hooked into shamanism, but that, I think it picks that up when it hits north. Okay. So I, I don't think, but that's that's because the ideas are. Yeah, I have to show you the map, but the ideas are moving around in different ways. I, mean, mm -hmm. I, I in fact, I was thinking I, I haven't never done an art on it, but I was thinking I probably should draw an art, kind of like in color it where I think sort of the paths of these things did. Sort of. Right. But yeah, it'd be cool. So we've also got uh, some discussion on actual shamanism here. So, beginning around 30,000 years, uh, shamanism, such as that seen in Siberia, gra Gravetian culture? Like, or Graviton, like, or Graviton, like grave okay. burials, because they were big into, great, but go ahead. But they okay. buried shamans mainly, but not the first people. Uh, so, Siberian gra Graviton culture, 30,000 years ago, uh, Graviton culture, 34,000 to 24,000 years ago, and Western Graviton mainly France, Spain, and Britain, as well as Eastern Graviton in Central Europe and Russia. The Eastern Gravitons, which include the Pavlovian culture. That's fine. And, <laughs> I think that might actually be correct. So you have to it. I mean, 
Okay. <laughs> so it sounds halfway decent, or maybe, you know. Sounded okay. <laughs> so your Czechoslovakia was working well. No. <laughs> I think that that's what the area it's in is okay. Czechoslovakia. But go ahead. And the Pavlovian culture, 31,000 to 25,000 years ago, such as Austria and Poland. 31,000 to 20,000 years ago, uh, oldest shaman, the oldest shaman was female and buried with the oldest portrait carving. So, um, I wonder, can you expand on that a little bit? The burial? Well, yeah. It also is buried with a fox. So, it's, oh, okay. it's since the first human and, and canid, I don't know if actually, I may not even be the first human and canid. I do, I do know that they're older than that. There was already, um, I think it's not because I know at some point there's a cane in um, like a wolf head where they took the tooth and they they, they they like drilled a hole through the tooth like you would hang a jewelry off the tooth or something. Okay, interesting. I don't, I don't, but so, but anyways, there's already this association and it's like, and they're the Graviton culture, Graviton culture are the ones that probably domesticated the wolf. Oh, okay, so there's shamans, and in cool. fact, that the at that at 28 or whatever, seven, whatever it is that the shaman burial is holding a little wolf. I think it also has to do with the fact of shamans having like spirit animal kind of things or whatever. Oh, interesting. Or like in in that concept, it probably has to do the same thing like the horns where it's in a sense, an intercessory thing that can like communicate likely also the fact that it has fangs being something like the horns that they are believed to, you know, connect to spirits. That's why also they probably are, doing a lot of, especially shamans, not only do they have teeth necklaces, but there's a shaman burial, I think it's 17,000 or, I think that's what it is, but the teeth have like symbols on them. Oh, Different, okay. Like, you know, like, symbols, like of magical guy. symbols and you wear it. Interesting. So. That's cool. So, but, so, it, 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 so to me, like I said, once you understand that, the behavior is similar. There, there's not horns in that one, but there is mammoth scapula, which is like I guess the shoulder blades over laid over her burial. Okay, and it itself has the in a sense writing on it, or it seems like symbols. And there's very few symbols even in that area, and they're they're related to this. So it's just showing, just like later at 17, even though this is way earlier. There's the burial. There's some set of a thing of an animal that has horns, you know, or whatever, like you know, tusks, you know. Right. And there's tusks also laid near burials, but um, the it, it it so the, the the body being done with the dog is already sh- or, or or wolf or whatever is already showing. And in fact, there's it happens multiple times. You'll see tons of shamans and then turtles also because turtles are related to the constellations. I think there's twelve like little nodules or whatever on the, on their thing. And then there's certain amount in this. It all relates to like the sky. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. That's very cool stuff. <laughs> so I guess, uh, yeah, that was that. Uh, uh, let's see. Where are we? In Damien's thinking, shamanism is approximately a 30,000 year old belief system and belief in a spirit-filled life and or afterlife that can be attached to or expressed in things or objects. And these objects can be used by special persons or in special rituals that can connect to spiritful, to a spirit-filled life and or afterlife. And let me just say a couple of things. One of the things that is very common is the drum. And to me, this is what, here's what I think sort of about the drum and shamanism, and leading to paganism, just real quick, because those both actually go to each other. But in Korkatepe, Turkey, at 12,000, there's already, or maybe it's 11,000, there's already this stone, like, mace head, which I know later definitely has to do with leaders and, mm. like, hitting people in the head and and kings even later than that, like, those separate. Okay. So this is all related. But I don't think... When it first started, they're cracking anybody in the head because, as far as I remember, there's no one with any damage. These mm. things are just found. So my thought is they didn't start that way. They were a part of leadership, spiritual leadership. 
I think that they were boom, boom. Oh, they're, okay. They put it at an end of a stick. They put the mace head and they're boom. They're talking to this. They're, they're getting into the spirit realm. Boom, boom, boom. Because it's it's like like a trance. It's people. So the drumming and like chanting, like the name of horror or, or whatever. Because if it, actually, if you hear different um, shamanistic things, either from Nordic or from Mongolia or Siberia or the Americas, funny thing, almost all sound the same. Interesting. Yeah. You want to know why? Because mm. it's all related. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. That, that makes sense. <laughs> Magic. <laughs> <laughs> if it's related, then guess what? It does have a similarity. Yeah, yeah. So um, the fact they're all doing this, right? So they all have this. It, it's because it's older. So it also helps you understand, like, and you're thinking, like, if you when you're seeing it all over, I would talk to my brother about this too, which I wanted to address in the, in this because as we get closer to more complex religion, this is important. There's two things that can happen to why religions are similar, besides a third thing, but I mean that they're related. Okay, so okay. There's people that are archaeologists, because there's like, things could be similar and not related at all. And I was right. like, you could put horns in your head, and I could have horns in my head, but actually, we actually didn't relate. So that's possible. But there's two other things. That's not what I'm talking about. Talking about when they are related. So when people believe 100% they're related, it doesn't mean you always know why. That's what I want to focus on. Okay. Okay, we agree. But how did it happen? So to me, the two big thing is one is a, like a monomyth. And that was um, a word or a term, I believe, invented by Joseph Campbell, who is now okay. been kind of debunked that his theories were not adequate. Okay. But the concept itself of... If you're meaning it, once again, about terms, how do you mean that word? Because I'm not that word's not bad to me. If you mean that there's an original culture and cultural myth, and then later it becomes different, and they're relating to that mono myth that they all share in a sense. Okay, I agree with that there is such a thing as that. Right. Okay, there's multiple things of that. But there's another way that you get it. Synchronization or synchronism or something like that. If I'm saying it probably wrong, but <laughs> I, know, I know the term. <laughs> Fair. But anyways, <laughs> like philosophy, I don't know if I can spell them all, but I, I know what they are. Yeah. But, Try spelling bourgeoisie. <laughs> <laughs> so so with, with the, um, the different um, things, religions come together sometimes, right? Different cultures. Whether they are powerful, weak, it doesn't always matter because, so, like, let's say powerful. The Spanish took over America, supposedly, right? You know, okay. and put the Catholicism everywhere, but they still synchronized with some of the indigenous beliefs because they have Day of the Dead and other things. And right. So, so my point is, synchronizing happens sometimes, which is that when two things come, they kind of like blend in a little bit, or you know, they can pick right. up shared ideas. So sometimes when you see stuff, you need to make sure that it's not that, because what I mean is a monomyth, what I think of it is more of a pure, like it just comes all the way down, unless you know which culture did to which, because that, that, because then you're adding new influence, new influence, new influence, new influence, which I think actually really would happen. You have an original myth and it was like freaking ping pong. Boom, 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 right, right. Picking up stuff all over the place and then everyone's doing their own little sort of thing. Adding on to it and taking out of it. And right. So just always be careful that it could be either a monomyth or a synchronism. And synchronism is influenced. So it's not, it, it may have be, they got the synchronism from someone who had a monomyth, but now they're taking it and doing something different with it. Okay. So sometimes it can happen. Like I said, Day of the Dead is not an Aztec thing, but it's not really a Catholic thing either. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you don't get that in other Catholic countries. <laughs> So you're like, it's kind of something new. Sort yeah, of. yeah. You get my point. So I'm just saying, so some people, <clears throat> what I'm saying is because it's the new thing, you can't look at it and say, now I understand the old stuff. Right. Because sometimes yeah. it's too altered that it's it's related, but it's because they kind of heard it or something, kind of picked it up and liked some part. So it starts yeah. becoming so deformed, you can't hardly tell. That's you what I'm saying. more is, context. More context. As I was just saying, be careful. When even though seeing things can seem exactly the same, just saying, make sure you know like how it's really coming in. Is it coming in right. as the original idea or a copy, sort of? And I don't mean by copy because you can have direct transfer. 
I'm saying more like not direct transfer, kind of like right, <laughs> like kind of like. Well, I know it's a kind of a cliche, but kind of like the game of telephone, right? Like where you well, transfer yeah, yeah, things but also and like, let's just say, well, let's say this. Um, some somebody uh, um, comes from another place is Mormon, right? First time Mormons go somewhere, there's no other Mormons. So, but eventually, if the whole town is Mormon, they may pick up stuff because the Mormons do something a certain way. So they right. start catering to that certain thing and don't even realize it's because they're Mormon. Right. You know, right. Or whatever. You get my point. So all of a sudden it just becomes part of the, the so that's why I'm never kind of like you can copy something and all of a sudden it, but it, 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 they don't even know why or what. So it's, it's totally, or they make new, totally bizarre stuff up. You know, you get my point. I think so. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just saying that religion could be confusing and I always understand it's always, more confusing really than even I'm explaining it. I'm trying to make mm -hmm. it less confusing, even though people <laughs> like, you make it so detailed. I'm like... Yeah. But without that's I mean if you don't have a detailed explanation, then that makes it even more confusing because then you're just seeing two con two things that look similar or two things that you know you have no mm -hmm. idea why. And you and it's justified to then say I don't know. Yeah, but you must yeah. keep reading. So, all right, where were we? Um. So, if you believe like this, regardless of your faith, you may be a hidden shamanist. <laughs> Around twenty nine thousand to twenty five thousand years ago, in Doni Vestonici. No, that's too Italian that's for fine. the Czech Republic. <laughs> It's in the Czech Republic, but the oldest human face representation is a carved ivory female head that was found near a female burial and belonged to the Pavlovian culture, a variant of the Graviton culture. The left side of the figure's face was a distorted image and is believed to be a portrait of an elder female who was around 40 years old. She was ritualistically placed beneath a pair of mammoth scapula, one leaning against the other which we did mention but already. Surprisingly, the left side of the skull was disfigured in the same manner as the aforementioned carved ivory figure, indicating that the figure was an intentional depiction of this specific individual. The bones and the earth surrounding the body contained traces of red ochre, which we've heard before. A flint spearhead had been placed near the skull and one hand held the body of a fox. This evidence suggests that this was the burial site of a shaman. This is the oldest site, not only of ceramic figurines and artistic portraiture, but also of evidence of early female shamans. And before to Damon, before 5,500 years ago, women were much more prominent in religion. Ar archaeologists okay, usually describe two regional variants. The Western Graviton, known namely from cave sites in France, Spain, and Britain, and the Eastern Graviton in Central Europe and Russia. The Eastern Gravitons include the Pavlovian culture, which were specialized mammoth hunters and whose remains are usually found not in caves, but in open air sites. These origins of the Graviton people you were, know what open are air not site means? It's like, it's uh, like out, out in, in the flatlands. It's not, it's, it's not hidden somewhere. It's just like right out in, you know. Not in a cave, not in yeah. a, okay. Out the field or something. That's interesting. They just kind of let them rot out there. <laughs> ah, so one of the things, but one of the things besides, they don't find a lot of burials though. And uh, the reason I think they're open air sites, not a lot of burials. There are some burials, but there's also should be a lot more. <laughs> it's and, and I think it's because they're, they're, it's possible. I know at some point they they did sky burials where they basically place an. Uh, at first, I think they place it on the ground. And I think it has to do probably also, this is my own personal thought, is function. It's cold as shit during the Ice Age. Not very convenient to dig holes. Right. You're like, what am I working so hard for? This time is <laughs> dead, man. I'm not going to die trying to dig him a hole. Yeah. So they don't want, in a sense, just any, I think at first it's probably wolves, and I think it relates to, Probably why we started having friends of wolves. Fuck, are leaving dead bodies everywhere? Right. <laughs> They're like, yeah. taking meal time. 
So, but, it, but, because, and then that would have been seen as probably sacred. But I think eventually it goes to the birds. And this is, mm-hmm. this goes to like even like in um, Tori Gates, which is the red gate that you see for Japan. That's a bird okay. perch. Interesting. The bird perch, there's used to be just regular trees with like a rope tied across. Or maybe just a tree put across those branches, and now it's like a bunch of trees. Okay. So Same it isn't. I'm saying and it also then you could put a body up there, you know, like right. The Americans did this. They put them on 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 scaffolding and stuff. Yeah, like in the trees. And then the birds, birds can come and eat whatever, right? Right. Because the birds then take it to the soul, just like when you're gonna shaman's gonna do a prayer in a sense to the thing, the great sky. They um, put blue and white ribbons and they tie them to trees. Okay. Or they make like a teepee looking thing or like a sacred mountain structure. And then they either put a pole and then like a tree, like a fake tree or the world tree, which is also a myth, I think, too. But so they, they, they put these ribbons on and that relates to the soul's prayers in the sky in a sense. Okay, that's interesting. So, like, uh, yeah, it, it makes sense that uh, you're you're leaving your body out to nature in an open air site instead of burying it, uh, and e- like you say, you assign some kind of sacred ritual or sacred belief to that, right? Associated with your cultural spiritual. Culture. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, to me, like I said, you should say, just say culture because I already think that that religion culture is the same shit. So like, yeah. I, I think other people are playing word games because it makes their magic culture beliefs sound, I guess, better because no, no, this is sacred. <laughs> mm. Okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, where was I? The origins of the Graviton people are not clear. They seem to appear simultaneously all over Europe. Though they carry distinct genetic signatures, the Gravitons and Aurignacians before them were descended from the same ancient founder population. According to... From Africa that came from Israel. They went from North Africa into Israel, into Turkey, and then into, you know, through the Balkans, into Europe. Oh. Something like that. According to genetic data, 37,000 years ago, all Europeans can be traced back to a single founding population that made it through the last ice age. Furthermore, the so-called founding fathers were part of the Aurignacian culture, which was displaced by another group of early humans, humans members of the Graviton culture. Right. So the first people were totemists, those Aurignacians. Well, the first people were animists but from Africa. And then they brought animus to Israel, and they may have been influenced when they did did stuff, had sex, and and interacted with the the Neanderthal. They may have got some totemism there. I don't know. Okay. They may have. Then they shoot into Europe and all of a sudden exhibit totemism. But like I said, is it that? Is it maybe a little bit of that? Is it also the fact, like I said, that several like junts in, not totally connected, and then kind of finding each other? Right, I I think would inspire. I mean, it just it already sounds like you're not. I mean, you haven't seen this person ten years, you know, or you don't, you know. And now you're doing your whole different life is different, you know. You're right. They're used to something not, you know, mountainous, and now you're in the mountains for ten years, you know. And now imagine, yeah, and that on a cultural scale, right? <laughs> yeah, and, and, and you and you don't have any like we have so much prehistory to reference right we don't realize we're like oh, i don't know anything you know shit loads what are you talking about <laughs> right. no they didn't know anything they didn't know those people they found 10 years later weren't different people right they weren't but they didn't know that you see what uh, i'm saying yep so i can totally see where we're similar but yeah we're different and wouldn't they have a little bit 10 years later different a little bit different beliefs because they have different animals and now whoa what are you talking horned animals what we worship the woman what are you or you know i'm just saying so yep. you, you can see where it, w- it would start to cause issues then 
another wave. So those people are now totemists are uh, doing stuff in Europe. Another wave of animus comes, hits the Balkans, still animus, because there's in Croatia, there's great graviton barrels at 38,000, no frills. Okay. So to yeah. me, no graviton. Right. So, or the animus gravitons. Shows you something. So yeah, no totems, no uh no nothing. Uh, just a burial package. Wow. Just done, you know. Wow. Because later buried with six thousand beads, you know. <laughs> like like <laughs> right. and a human head on top of them, and then two kids with four thousand beads and head to head with um big long pikes and things and toys and stuff and oh yeah right <laughs> yeah. interesting so something happened now i don't know exactly what happened and i don't claim that's why i think it's it's irresponsible sometimes i'm sure something happened mm -hmm. even archaeologists will look at it, well, something happened something obviously happened <laughs> <laughs> how'd they go from like nothing and all of a sudden look like native americans or something you know like, because they're beaded clothes, and so they're like, "What?" Right? They like, something changed in the culture yeah. that made them start doing that. Massive. I mean, it went from like you know a two level on cultural like advancements, and I mean by the technology of how I mean six thousand beads, these little tiny beads, and they're sewn on their clothes, and wow, what? You know, when when did that start? You know, <laughs> needles. <laughs> right. But I mean, I'm, they already had needles, I think, by 50,000 or 55. But my point, though, is I'm just saying this is like the newest technology. Hmm. And then you go from no extravagance to like almost unbelievable opulence. It's like it would be like, you know, seeing like a, a regular burial with with nothing and all of a sudden finding the Egyptians. Hmm. I mean, it's like it's like it, to me, it's it's like that extreme how different it is. You have a burial with absolutely nothing. And then all of a sudden. All this ritual and yeah, tons of ritual, tons of stuff. You're like what? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And and it's and it's and it looks though, like I said, a little bit different than what's happening already in Europe. Okay. And so this is like in Russia, and then it, it moves, and then it takes over. Okay, interesting. And but it picks up some of the ideas, and some of them, either move over here or already we're over here they shoot back into africa okay huh. some of them through israel and then back in at thirty thousand, they are in morocco okay so they are already shooting way down getting away from the gravitons who then come into russia for sure and then shoot all the way to with these to me, totemistic, shamanistic, animistic ideas, and they take them over to Lake Balka, over in Siberia, above China and Mongolia, and all that. Okay. And then that stuff also goes over to the Americas. It shoots all the way across. And, yep. So that's cool. why. That's the kind of little path of the shaman. So, my opinion. <laughs> Interesting. Um, where was I? I think I finished that uh, paragraph. Uh, between 37,000 years ago and 14,000 years ago, different groups of Europeans were descended from a single founder population to a greater extent than their or organization uh, predecessors. They are now, they are known for their Venus figurines, which to Damien's thinking are more like totems than goddesses until then goddesses until after 12,000 to 11,000 years ago. Then, by 7,000 years ago, male gods emerge with a new spread of violence. Right. So, the, and, and, the, and the female things, I think they are really related to the moon. Like, these okay. little things we're wearing, I think, relates to the moon. Just like, like the pagans, there's a saying that's as above, so below. This has to do with, with and, and Christians, say, I might even say this too, but... They're talking about as in heaven, as beyond earth or whatever. Right, yeah. As er on earth as it is. As heaven, above, so what? Yeah. think about how they say it. Anyways, it's it, it yeah. similar, doesn't it? Yep. Yeah. Well, that's actually or already a shame and maybe even a totemism that 50,000. Right. Thinking, yeah, certainly. Because in, understand, too, because in an animist world, there is no other. 
Yeah. If you're uh, animus. Yeah. There's no other. Everything is a spirit. There's no right. spirit world. There were, this world is full of spirits. What do you mean spirit world? The spirits are here. <laughs> <laughs> so, in a sense, you know, so they could have an afterlife too, but that would just be a continuation of there's already spirits here and there's somewhere else where there's also already spirits. Now they're ancestors. Right. In the same idea, in the same way that like, uh, there's a place that I'm not at. Correct. <laughs> exactly. Not the sense of that's other, which yeah. to me totemism starts the othering. Okay. That's why I was saying to me, when I start hearing the totemism difference and the shamanism difference, and the, you start hearing like how the thinking, like what equals that thinking? I used to, uh, I used to read a lot of uh, like I was really into comic books for a really long time, and one of the things that always interested me was the uh, the way that they explore ideas of heaven and hell and spiritual mm -hmm. realms and whatnot. And at some point, the mix between like, okay, so God is just a person with superpowers, right? right? And Heaven is just a place you can go if you have the right door. Like it's just a place. Right. <laughs> right. There's nothing special about it that requires you to die necessarily. You can just go there. Right. <laughs> so, but, yeah, or hell too, right? Yeah. You just right. Supposedly went there, came back. Yeah, you can just go there. It's Listen. just a place. <laughs> <laughs> like New York. If you have can, you can go there. <laughs> but heaven and hell, I don't think we're always there. This is the right, right thing right. to understand that even gods, they weren't always there. We know this for sure because if you, when they tested um, indigenous people, I think it was 32 or something, 33 uh, different things all over the world and like indigenous cultures, and it was only, I think it's 30 something percent think that there's gods and only 14% think they're active in the world. Okay, interesting. And I think 16% uh, worship them or something. So a little more worship them, a little less think that they do anything. So, I mean, that's not, if so, if, if people are looking at, well, oh, everyone believes in a god. Man, no, that's not accurate. Not well, so how much. How do you know? It's your opinion. I don't know. It's research. That's how. Well, I mean, it stands to reason that not everyone will believe in the same gods or goddesses or things that you know people assume that everybody believes in. Yeah, well, and sometimes also goes back to the nurse thing. Sometimes it's just how people say things because yeah. they'll say it, and then Damien goes, "Yeah, but that's not a god." Like, <laughs> like, like the Hazai people. Well, we don't have any deities. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. But we do have this one cultural story. Oh, yeah. What's it about? Oh, it's about the creation of the world. Oh, really? It comes from a woman. Well, that doesn't sound too unreasonable. <laughs> <laughs> But this is the ones yeah. I've heard. That's probably the one that seems somewhat reasonable. Yeah, yeah. No, but anyway, so they, they say, well, we don't worship her, and she's not really a goddess, but this is the mother of everybody. And I thought, oh, well, I guess if you, you see what I'm saying? But you know, so yeah, is that just a cultural myth that sounds like almost a fact, <laughs> or is that like somebody's making you know? But yeah, it's it's it blurs the lines between what somebody you know. Uh, what is say, a god and what is a spiritual belief and what is all this, right? Because <laughs> you're like, well, you said it's kind of like your creation myth, but see, I mean, but it doesn't sound <laughs> that odd, really, other than you saying it's, yeah. you know, the spirit being, other than you saying that our spirit ancestor, well, I can't remember what, what they said, but I'm just saying that sometimes how they say things can still sound sort of similar. Right, right. But I also know that the problem is is a lot of people they um, feel that no religion already that the term God is totally and I'm just saying even that they don't think about to me I think about it as categories of gods like I the high gods and low gods because this is also how native people think is the high mm -hmm. gods and low gods there's a there's a difference in how they believe in that stuff and. High gods would, of course, just think about it in the sky. They're usually like superior creators or whatever. And low gods are generally like Mother Earth or something. Something is, they generally like protectors, beneficiaries. So yeah, it already helps you. And guess which one to me it probably is first? I think it's the protectors. And then later, the other ones come. Then even later, then the moralistic ones come, which right. we're going to do videos on. <laughs> cool. <laughs> 
So I don't know. Did we cover everything you wanted to cover on this one? Well, I, like I said, I think I think that you know I got derailed a little bit, but I, I, both of us today were kind of in a tired mood. But yeah, I, I, I think we did good because I wanted people to understand that you need to to understand the different variations. I always think it's odd when people feel that how I I'm so detailed in like say religion when they do want their scientists that way, right? Right. I mean, imagine, like, well, Damien, you're just too much. I'm like, really? Because I think I understand it a lot instead of just making shit up. But actually, if you understand how I do, it makes it all more understandable. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking actually earlier today, too, that, like, the study of history and the study of prehistory, like, this, like it's doing it in a, a quote-unquote scientific way, right? Right. Where you're looking for evidence you're right. exploring hypotheses, dismissing right. them if the evidence doesn't support it, right. stuff like that. Like, and trying to get at the the truth of the situation. And sometimes that's going to be super detailed. Well, almost always, unless you're yeah. just talking <laughs> about the highlights. You know, yeah, in a sense. that's right. And I'm trying. Well, the reason to it, I, I wanted two things. I want to not just present the information and my my in a sense opinion about it or my thinking or what I've learned, but I also want to help people understand how to approach it and when someone's talking to you if they start sounding a certain way you know a what they're asking for do it like i do i justify all my shit right and i demand it I, I, to me of myself i i fucking don't hold ideas i don't fucking feel justified what the hell yeah <laughs> i mean i hope you don't either <laughs> yeah it's it's similar to conversations i have uh, with uh justin on my other show uh, about anarchism versus, you know, Marxist Leninism and why we believe the things we believe and kind of the ideas. And if you can't justify the things that you think, it makes it really hard to get other people to think them. <laughs> like, or to feel compelled to. Yeah. Yeah. Or and without, I, well, I, without well, I coercion, you, right? Yeah. I, I want you to be compelled. I don't just want to give you something you go, I believe Damien because I like Damien. I, I, right. You don't care if you like me or not. I mean, it's nice if you do, but I don't really care about that. I want you to understand how to think, why to think, not just I'm giving you this and just trust me no matter what, or right. don't trust scientists. Like, what the hell kind of nonsense is that? And I, to me, that's why I told the one guy, well, actually, I think that the truth, in a sense, is best championed in the sunlight of challenge. <laughs> There's yeah. nothing wrong with it. And I've been challenged a lot. And that's also why I, I say all kinds of stuff and I give the info for people because I'm not trying to, you know, just say stuff so that I can seem superior. Right. I want to show, like, not just how I did it, but so you can get it. So then you can start deconstructing religion or things or whatever. Because yeah. to me, really, when you start to get my more methodological, detailed, axiological way I value and, and assess things slower and more detailed i think it just helps in general for you to do it to yourself slow down and just get like a buffer that you everything has to kind of justify you don't just like let things just be poured into your brain <laughs> yeah that's right <laughs> go ahead and um, plug your stuff and, and uh, sure uh the mind of a skeptical leftist on youtube and uh on all the podcast apps uh, we do uh, Red Reviews, which is a, a book review uh, segment that I do with Justin Clark, who is a public historian. Uh, I do interviews with people to spread critical thinking, progressive politics, and left-wing philosophy. And I read uh, anarchist readings, as well as I do a segment called Ask an Anarchist, where I try to do the philosophy myself with a few references here and there. So... <laughs> Right on. Well, and, and it's important. I really do appreciate what you do because people think that some of this stuff that, you know, me being tedious and breaking down all the different religions, but has it not been beneficial? Are, oh, yeah. are, you, are you yourself not looking at religion a lot in the sense more critically, really, after you get more information? Well, it's I find that it's really beneficial to know the history of various segments of society and to see how it kind of like. Uh, has how it translates to my own view of our current society and, and right. like religion and as well as uh, hierarchical 
hierarchical structures and capitalism and socialism and just my own philosophy. I, I, fi I find it to be very helpful to have. Yeah. And, 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 like, and, and aren't you kind of picking up like my way of like approaching things? Oh yeah. And some, definitely in some ways, I don't know. I don't know that I'm applying it all the time. <laughs> well, no, I'm not saying that you had to. I, I, but, yeah. I wasn't even saying. I was. I just meant that you're becoming more aware. Yeah. The way that I do things is not because. Well, my wife says regional, reasonable, and logical. <laughs> logical. Well, reasonable. You're the logical one. We'll leave that for you. <laughs> I don't want to overshare. That's not mine. Look, I'm no logician, so my wife is more that. Not that she's read those books, but she's way more that. But to me, that's more of like when you get more like, in a sense, scientific or mathematical. Mine is more the before that. I'm reason. So, anyways. But no, I, I, I appreciate what you do because it, it is important. It's important to champion reason. I mean, this is not a joke. Look at look at look at our world that, that's going on now. Not only that they're being fed lies. If you have reason and you're fed a lie, you laugh at the ha, huh, are you kidding me? Yeah. Or when you start to realize that this doesn't match up with the justification of what should happen, you go, ha ha, are you kidding me? You don't just keep going, oh no, whatever the orange man says. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or whatever Elon yeah, Musk whatever. I'm just media says. <laughs> yeah. This is the media around Elon Musk says. Or... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Whatever quote comes out of one of those billionaires that has yeah. all the time in the world to write billionaire stuff yeah cool cool story bro <laughs> uh yeah yeah it, it's good to be able to uh, like the thing that i really like is the uh the rooting of things in in kind of the values right like i really appreciate that about uh the way our interactions how i've kind of i i was doing some of it before but i think i do it better now how I yeah. root everything in kind of a value system. And you, it, well, because you start to realize immediately, not only is it true, it's very persuasive. Yeah. I persuade people all the time. They go, oh, you can't get people to, I get people to believe shit all the time. It's a good thing I'm ethical. It's really the better <laughs> thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. But, but, but once again, like you said, I don't just teach if I value system, I try to live one, yeah. which I think is part of the teaching one. Yeah. You yeah. want to know what's a good thing? Just like I said to me, I I don't see myself as a leader like Donald Trump does. Donald Trump sees himself as a leader is that now you need to glorify me. Yeah, I see myself as a leader is that I have an ability that can help people, and there's shitloads of people that need help, so I'm going to help. I mean, <laughs> it's just, I don't I don't think. Then I don't feel like, well, oh, now I should be like, you know, worship for that. I think that it should inspire other people to do the exact same thing, near the Damien idea that, wow, if I have an ability and there's people in need, I should go help. Yep. Uh, what is it? To, to quote the, the Communist Manifesto, from each according to ability to each according to need. <laughs> right. But, I, but I'm saying you could justify that without even a manifesto. Just yeah. Oh, your, yeah. Like I said, value. If you really look at the value, it's really hard to say that what's not there. But but it allows me, though, to be able to navigate through all kinds of people's moralities, mm -hmm. supposedly, that they hold. And I tear them all to sunder, whether it's philosophers or theologians or anarchists or socialists or Democrats or, or Republicans. It doesn't even matter. Atheists, it doesn't matter. But it's not... Here's the thing that, that because we all really do know what the value is or what mm -hmm. value it should kind of be. And so when we bring it to this point, everyone goes, because they know, <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're yeah. Like, oh, are you saying that there's no such thing as, as, as benefit to feeding people that are hungry? I mean, what? I mean, they, they, then you must have no morality at all. What yeah. do you mean by this? this and it, <laughs> what even are we doing <laughs> if we're not interested in feeding hungry people? Well, because it, well, and it, the question should be, do you have the ability to feed them? Not, mm -hmm. is it necessary? Are they hungry? Can I feed them? Yeah. 
do I have the means? Where can I get the means? Should that, I mean, I, I just our society with its massive opulence, like I said, you know, already I don't like the fact these these people are flying people to the moon and and, and thinking that they're they're somehow doing something for humanity. Right. Massive self glorification, like you know, shooting itself in a rocket. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. And, and the fact that you could do that where there's people in need, like I, I have nothing. I, I never had anything. And I've tried to give everything I have away. I can't even imagine the kind of evilness that it takes yeah. to have that much money and not help people. Like it, it, it just like reminds me of that, that, that one, I can't remember his name now. I think it's Carnegie or said that a, that a person, that a rich man, a, if a person dies, a rich man that died in shame or something like that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You should be spending your money on giving it away to benefit the world. Yeah. I mean, to me, like I said, look at the values. What kind of a person do you want to be? I don't know. That's why I, I don't get into those arguments about the different stuff. That's also why I don't care that much about flags and stuff, you right. know, or, or calling people names, communists or not, or social. I've heard a lot of people say a lot of those words, and I, and I don't always like the human who's who's – Right. those terms yeah so to me i care about the what what do you stand for because i know i stand for human flourishing i want our betterment and i, I cannot happen with this it, it's like we have hunger games world or something you know that somehow only the strong should survive to me is evil yeah yeah it's absurd <laughs> like i've had their person work well damien look how you survive i'm like yeah should i be the only one I mean, and I, th I think like uh, this project that we're doing, uh, I think that we have observed uh, even in the short time we've been doing it, that the whole thing, none of this comes from individuals just being on their own and doing shit. <laughs> it all came from community. It all came from collective uh, movement of ideas and materials and people doing yeah. things together. Yeah. Culture. Culture, culture made this thing that we call religion, and then now we're like scared of it, and we think it's something different to culture or sacred. You know, it, it's that's it, the thing. I, I'm not anti-culture either. I mean, <laughs> right? Of course not. <laughs> well, no, because well, because well, because this is the problem. Because I I'm an anti-religionist. I say this openly. I'm mm. just an atheist or an anti-theist. I'm an anti-religionist. I am against professional lying. Sorry. I mean. <laughs> Maybe you're okay with it. No, I'm not. Yeah, that's so. True. I mean, it's but that doesn't mean like that. I somehow I want to attack people that have religion. I have people that have, that have religion. I don't attack them. And I told you, I had at least half of my followers on LinkedIn were probably religious, right? And they really liked me. And that some of them started like questioning themselves and started, you know. But you know why? Is because I'm not toxic. But like you said before. I do it in an anarcho-humanist way. Mm -hmm. I never say that their stuff is okay. Never. Never once. I never cut them slack at all. Zero. Nothing. It's like Nazism, like you said. I've had right. Nazis change because of me, not because I changed, Yeah. but because I didn't. That's what I'm trying to get the other social anarchists. Look at your, your – think about this. Whoever you are, you're a social anarchist. I hope that you did because of values. I mean yeah. – not like the selfish assholes that go, I don't want to pay taxes, so I'm going to be an anarchist. What the? No. That's not. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you. That's not even what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'd rather have taxes then. Fuck that bullshit. No, yeah. but my point is, so it's a value thing. Like, let's just like say, why do I not um, rape children? Uh, is it because there's just no children available? I mean, it's a moral <laughs> Or thing, is it right? because there's something wrong with it? <laughs> right. So the yeah. same thing of why it's yeah. good. You would yeah, think, or you should, right. or certainly I do. I don't know. Like I said, I didn't randomly go, you know what? I think anarchism, maybe. You know? like it was, <laughs> right. You know, it's, it started. It's yeah. I realized, like I said, first off, someone told me, yeah, I think you're an anarchist. You know, I didn't actually go seeking it out. It's just I started thinking and talking certain ways, and everyone's like, yeah, there's already something for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, there's already socialism. Oh, there is? Oh, okay. Cool. That has a name. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, but it, so what I'm trying to say is that, but even if if you had it for another reason, there's still it should the basis of it, I would think, should be values. Yeah, yeah. And that right. the reason why you want socialism is because you believe it's the best thing, right? Yeah. I mean, should I mean, 
I'm hoping that's why you want it. Right. Because I mean, you think that it will create right, yeah. the most flourishing society of for the best people for every, right. the so best you, for everyone. Right. So this is why, in a sense, I think that we should have secularism too. Yep. Like in a sense, like I said, I would never, even though I'm anti-religion, I would never destroy someone's religion. But no, I want to destroy the idea of it and then tell you about it, so that you, your mind, can then destroy it yourself. That we together can destroy your religion, not me. And I specifically don't want. Uh, any religion to have power in our society to control what other people think. Oh, I, want, I don't want anyone to have like, control yeah, that's what other right. people think. <laughs> like the re- secularism is the best system for that because then everybody gets to believe what they think is true in a s- spiritual sense without anybody else. Well, forcing. it shouldn't even be spiritual. Could be even, that's why, politi- well, yeah, Just like yeah. I say, there's some political things I breaking hate like the day is long. Yep. But I but I wouldn't say that it is illegal. What I would say is they shouldn't be allowed to be in public without me going there and making sure they know how I fucking think about it. <laughs> yeah. Which is uh, why I, I, I like going back to what you said about Antifa. I totally support Antifa. In fact, I have things that, that it has a picture of Antifa, and then I say I support our troops because yeah. I'm dead serious about it. I mean, I, I agree with you that I, I as far as them being the line against bigotry, hell fuck yes. All I was saying before was that we should have an ethical behavior. And to yes. understand people, it's not like Damien is trying to make you weak. I'm actually trying to make you strong. Ever seen how I use kindness? Dude, I beat people over the head with it. And they don't even understand what's happening. Yeah. Because they've not been – what I do is I stay ethical. So ethical that I can then hold them accountable for not being ethical. And it makes them feel shame. I'm telling you, it does. It makes them, even if it's a little thing, I'm telling you. And it, yeah. it's a power. It may actually add power, not removes it. But it's because I stay this, this certain way. I'm telling you, it, it's it's a way of, of understanding things that's just different. And that's what I'm trying to give people. That yeah. The world's told you that the only way you have power is, say, is violence. Like, I'm an anarchist. That's not how we do power or, or even <laughs> no. the power is some kind of thing we we're trying to get I'm no that's talking. right yeah that's we, my point though <laughs> i may not have the best thing about don't follow me if you want power in the sense. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> that's i'm not right. actually giving a lot of information on how to exactly achieve that yeah we don't want power what we want no. is everyone to feel empowered and empowered. have their right. yeah yeah and and and, that they, and this is the other thing, too, is that, as you know, my other issue with that goes back to the value system is I hate classism. I hate yeah. it because I see it's evil. It's in, it just that little bit that that person's no good. I don't have to care. It's that dehumanizing that we say, oh, you shouldn't do because that's the racism or sexism. But but if someone we don't like, fuck, bring it on. I hope right. to see them rot in hell or whatever, you know, or burn and die and torture. Well, you- you see that a lot within like uh, kind of <laughs> when somebody talks about like a, a child molester going to prison, they, they always have the, oh, they're going to get raped in prison jokes. And it's like, well, if we believe in justice, like being raped in prison isn't an, uh, isn't justice, right? Like that's not wishing for that isn't justice. In fact, I have a statement that I say. And I, and I, this, I say that I think there's a moral truth. There is no such thing as just rape. Exactly. There is no such thing. Yeah. No, you can't do it. So you, you could do it, but it's not just. <laughs> so it if, will not be justice. So if you're and a person also, who's wishing for that, then you're wishing for an unjust thing. Well, and like I said, the, the thing, people like say, oh, I want someone else to suffer. That is the problem. Yeah. What is the sickness? We have accepted this sickness. This Just like think. A psychopath. Every time and since I want to hurt someone, they could justify this a good thing. Right. And I, right. And I am a high functioning sociopath. I could justify because I mine's more like a not caring than a wanting to hurt anybody. It's just that I don't feel as much care if I did. Yeah. Well. Wow. So it's the like lower lower empathy or whatever. Anyway, right. my point is though, is that the ideal? <laughs> Should we all have <laughs> low empathy? <laughs> <laughs> Or, or how we want the, people to have high empathy as much or, as we or, can. It's all in the re- re- society wish of Damien is just to achieve my low empathy. Or would you like me to go just, I don't know, a little bit past that <laughs> to like a higher empathy? Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, but but the fact that see, it's funny when you say it like that because of course you'd say, well, of course, Damien should have it. I go, oh, good. Then you must hate capitalism, right? Mm -hmm. If you demand that people act ethical, why do you accept capitalism? You know what I'm saying? But but it's funny because they would demand or totally have no problem, right? Telling me, oh, you should act. Oh, that kind of sociopath's not acceptable. Really? So it's okay for capitalism now to do it. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. It's okay that major corporations throughout the world have no actual moral guide except for profit. Dude, it's like, <laughs> like they go, oh, well, you don't know. Really? I think it was like, I don't know. So I don't, I'm not quoting a number, but it's something like this. Like 50 billion gallons of water was taken by the whatever. I won't even name the company, but a, a company that does bottled water. We all know which company. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> So the company takes billions of gallons, right? Pays yeah. a fee of $78. Yeah. $78! You know who's paying for it? The whole community, right? Yeah. As their That's water right. gets depleted and taken. And not to mention, they're selling it back. So they're, we're, we're, in a sense, publicly funding yep. the water company. How could we not? $78 for all that water? So free water. They're basically a bug, a plastic bottle company. Yep. That's <laughs> the, right. That's the only thing they produce. <laughs> they produce that. The water's free. I mean, $78 for millions of gallons. Imagine how yep. they complain about our water bill or say they're going to shut our water off, right? Yeah. I mean, I've paid $78 for, for water. I think, I... Didn't we in California? <laughs> yeah. Seattle, we a hundred. Okay, it's, been, I, yeah, it's probably water and sewage, but still, so, I have a large household, so we pay a hundred and some dollars every month for water. <laughs> so, you see how unethical that is? Yeah, seriously, people. And you, this is, but in capitalism, it's all okay. It's yeah, presto changeo. Somehow, ethics are what. But Damien, it's not an ethical system. And I go, well, I know. So why do we allow it? Yeah. So why haven't we changed it? <laughs> right? It's not an ethical system. Yeah, I agree. Get that shit out. Why do we allow it then? It's, we just classify. See, and that's why, like, like, as one person said to me, well, Damien, if, but I'm an anarcho capitalist. Look, I'm an anarcho capitalist. Um, so are you telling me? That I would allow you to have your socialism, communism, whatever, anarchism. You wouldn't allow mine. And I said, see, but here's the issue. Socialism is ethical. Capitalism is unethical. Yeah. And <laughs> so it doesn't need a law to enforce it. You're not getting usury of people is not ethical. Yeah. I don't care if you say, well, because profit... What? <laughs> yeah. Uh, people who uh, are like anarcho-capitalism only exists and only can exist as long as you maintain private property as a concept. If you maintain private property as a concept, then the people with the biggest armies get the most property. That's feudalism. And they force you to work on their land for their benefit. Oh, oh, <laughs> That's it's, feudalism. Oh, it's, it's, <laughs> it's not anarchist anything. No, I think it's, to me it's cra crazy too. I, I always go think that, but are they ethical thinkers that come to this anarcho-capitalism utopia? And I go, I can test their <laughs> logic. Let's see. You must agree, like me, that we should start at zero, right? Not like somehow you get a billion and Damien gets the poverty, you know, life he's had, and yeah. then then we try. To go from there and become anarcho capitalists. <laughs> exactly. Right? Yeah, that well, doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> all the kings with all their wealth and all the capitalist wealth that it was gotten, the state of society that you say you hate, that tax people that's supposedly not supposed to happen. Yeah. All those, all that, you just totally you keep all that, right? Not get rid of it and start again and then go capitalism. <laughs> oh, no, we got to keep all the old stuff. Because yeah. no one's going to take your five trucks, right? It's always people that all, don't want to change things that want a narco-capitalist society, right? Yeah. Well, I have 10 machine guns. Do you think that 10 machine guns <laughs> is going to stop my whole 
thing of people if we wanted to come in and take you? When Halliburton, when Halliburton pays people to, so they have their private army and they have all the fucking guns, <laughs> your ten, your your army of 10,000 is not going to mean goddamn thing. You're... And none of them have armies of 10,000 to begin with. No, that's all right. these. But so, and also you wouldn't be able to get the system they think. All you would have is that corporations would then take the place of government. That's right. Or corporate people, whatever you want to call it. And it would be Hold on, a dictatorship. Bullshit. Corporate personhood. <laughs> yeah. And it would be, it would literally be a dictatorship in the same way that your workplace currently is a dictatorship. <laughs> how could it not be? And how could it not be still the continuation of usury? Yeah. That will that that stops? Yeah. Oh right. well, no, we're keeping that feature. So the one really fucked up feature that's blaring like a neon light, I suck. We're yeah. keeping that and calling ourselves <laughs> anarchists. Really? It's the worst parts of everything. <laughs> I'm like, it sounds more like Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome or some kind of a you know gladiator games you're you're talking about. And but I agree with you, it wouldn't be much long because they basically the yeah. corporation would just and, t- and, and then they would and I, in fact I, when I was a kid, I, you know, my kind of mind, I already invented this game I called Medicorp Three Thousand which to me, corporations take over government because government becomes useless. They got to keep, you know, messing with it and people vote, vote. Yeah. We, so to me, <laughs> and in my game, I make it where the corporations own areas of land and have basically workers living in this commune kind of under their control. Of course. And then they have outside people and corporate people and corporate people speak in math. And oh, yeah. everyone else speaks in mixes of language or gutter speak. Or, but anyways, this whole whole thing and how elitists try to talk in math so that other people don't understand. Anyway, you know, <laughs> I've had different problems than now. I try to talk in <laughs> language. <laughs> so, like in ten years or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. I know, but 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 I but because to me, I already saw way when I was a kid corporations the way this whole system i didn't realize capitalism or anything but i i mean now i understand i saw stuff i saw the capitalism i saw the the, the problem and i'm like they're gonna take over and they're gonna make their own thing and they're gonna because mm-hmm. they're a different class of people in fact in my, my thing you know everybody you know doesn't die the same and isn't treated the same because it's completely unequal yeah <laughs> so like, not much different than yeah, now. <laughs> so not much different than now and maybe later <laughs> but, yeah. And that's why it's important to champion the opposite and not just yeah. say that I don't agree or like, like, it's like I said, not, imagine someone just saying, I don't, I don't agree with God and then stopping there. I don't do right. that. And I don't do that with politics either. I don't go, well, Republicans are bad. So, okay, I'm good. The end. <laughs> You'd be a Democrat if you did that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So my, my, my point is that obviously to me, all these thoughts, and that's why someone's saying that to me that I, I think big, well, it's really that they, they, they don't like thinking big. They don't like big answers. They don't like to contemplate. And I, I, I said, I always find it odd because you wouldn't want a scientist that promoted that, would you? I mean, yeah. I like <laughs> I like people that are th- thinkers because I think, okay, they're a little more trustable because they're thinking and at least explain their thinking and I can maybe follow it because some people say stuff and I'm like, no. And then they explain and I go, oh, okay. I can maybe understand what you're seeing it now. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, but... I feel like sometimes it's an anti-intellectualism that's out of a kind of ego arrogance. Yeah. I know you're wrong. I don't need to learn why. Well, and <laughs> there's a, there's also a, a habit people seem to have of uh, like their personal experience, it, universalizing it. Right. So uh, just an oh, example, yes. we have, we have universal healthcare in Canada, right. Where everybody can go to the hospital for free. And so one guy one day said, went to the hospital at the emergency room and he had to wait for two hours because there was a long lineup. And as a result, he thinks that nobody should help. We shouldn't have universal health care because it creates long lines at the emergency room. <laughs> well, but once again, that would be a capitalist solution. We need to limit who's getting well, the wealth. Right. Right. right? <laughs> the profit, the profit being health insurance or health services. Yeah. Right? So to me, it's just, it, 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 but that, but that's how they are. It's like, like Donald Trump was actually funneling money they found 
from child's meals or whatever into his. Yep. From the nonprofits he was running into his campaigns and into other things. And and the fact that, that people could hear that and keep following him, you, you know, there's something serious. Like I said, values. Yeah. Seriously wrong. Yeah. It's yeah. And uh, I mean, back to back to my kind of story there was that it, despite the fact that uh, statistically you get ser- faster service in ERs when you have universal health care than you do when you don't, <laughs> that, that fact doesn't play into it because his personal experience was that he had to wait two hours. And it, his ideology says that that's because of socialism. <laughs> <laughs> so. but 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 it's so odd instead of saying just think of this i know it's it's a, the waits are long maybe we should hire more people in the medical profession or pay for scholarships in the medical profession to inspire people to become medical that we don't have yep. wait lines so That's it's right. not so it's not the answer is not less socialism it's always more socialism yep the answer is more socialism <laughs> well, yeah. well i mean but you see how his solution uh, there it's, yeah. it's so uh, th- th- how I would deal with a person like that as a rationalist is ask questions. So I would go, Oh, do you think that's the only solution? Right. How, as I'm talking about a way of not agreeing with him. Cause see, I see people sometimes go, Oh, I could see your side. I, you won't very, unless I actually feel that way. <laughs> unless I feel that way, I do not ever say that because, yeah. or say we agree to disagree. I also don't say that. It just seems like a, either a non sequitur or a rhetoric or just, just empty space being filled with some nonsense. Because to me, I don't agree with you. I want you to fully understand that leave so desperately understanding that, that later, you rethink about what you thought mm-hmm. and hopefully I, you know, the truth wins. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully <laughs> I do tend to, I, I do tend to be like, I understand your point and where you got that conclusion, but here's why I disagree with it. <laughs> but also I don't, I tend to cite statistics or, you know, I try to find facts that people for people, but they don't use, that's not how to appeal to people. That's not usually effective. Well, it's not effective just to give facts. Right. Yeah. There's no, there's a, it, it's a teacher problem. I talked to yeah. I talked about this before that anyone that blames it on the student, it's still the teacher. Right. All right. I mean, because are you saying a gifted teacher couldn't teach us it? Are you of saying that nobody yeah. could teach us it? <laughs> right. Yeah. You're just saying skill, right? Because, or you're saying that it's so hard. Only a skilled person could do it. Okay, but still we're back to it's not really the it's student. Not the, yeah. It's that the teacher needs to be skilled. Yeah, that's right. And so that's all I was trying to say. It's not, not putting down teachers. I know I, I appreciate teachers yeah. a lot. And and I, and I tried to, to, to be one. And that's all why I wanted to focus on this stuff here too is that our thing is not just – in a sense, teachers, I want to in, help other people to also be teachers. It's not just at all, you know, because it's empowerment means that I also make sure that Corey's empowered, not just myself yep. or that just us are, that everybody is. That's right. Anarchism is for everyone. Anarchism is for everyone. That sounds like a great place to go. <laughs> right on. Have yourself a good one and uh, talk to you in two weeks. All right on. Hello, and welcome to my channel. I am Damien Marie at Hope. In the simplest terms, I am an atheist humanist philosopher and prehistorical writer researcher at DamienMarieAtHope.com. I am specifically an axiological atheist. And axiological atheism can be thought to involve ethical and value theory reasoned and moral argument driven apathyism, agnosticism, atheism, antitheism, anti religionism, secularism, and humanism. Axiological atheists can be understood as a value theory or a value science atheist. As an axiological atheism's ethically reasoned and constructive pro-humanity. I am an axiological thinker.
value theorist. The science of goodness, worthiness, usefulness, valuableness, virtue, reliableness, accuracy, validity, morality, integrity, beneficialness, etc., etc. We axiologists have a value consciousness. And in general, we see the architecture of humanistic humanitarianism value in people that we see as dignity beings. Places and things are not. Axiology is a value theory. In its broadest sense, it involves areas of philosophy that are deemed to encompass some evaluative or evaluation aspect. Therefore, it crosses almost all domains in some way or another. Now for a more detailed terms as to what I am. I am an axiological atheist, an anti-theist, an anti-religionist, secularist, humanist, rationalist, writer, artist, poet, philosopher, advocate, activist, with schooling in psychology, sociology, as well as I am an autodidact, self-taught in science, archaeology, anthropology, and philosophy. I promote science and am against pseudoscience, pseudo-history, pseudo-morality, things that are found in religion. I support realism, axiology, of course, liberty, justice, ethics. I am also an anarchist socialist. I support anarchism and socialism, progressivism, liberalism, philosophy, psychology, archaeology, and anthropology, advocating for sexual, gender, child, secular, LBGTQIA+, race, class rights, and equality. So if you can guess from all that, I support or challenge that I have an eclectic variety of videos on a variety of topics. Please take time to check them out. As well as enjoy, if you enjoy them, please give them a like. And don't forget to subscribe as new things are on their way all the time for my channel.